Hi guys! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira and today I am going to be showing you a little Photoshop tutorial for making miniature text on paper. And I started talking about doing this tutorial in my super simple stacks of paper video, which I will link if you would like to check that out. But a few of you asked for this tutorial and so I'm very excited to do that for you today. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up Photoshop and I have Photoshop Elements so I don't have the big fancy version you don't have to have that elements will do what you want it to do um, it's I think about a hundred dollars but there is also a free version that does similar things and I can't remember what the name of it is but I will put that link in the description to that program so that you can check that out if you would like to if you don't have a hundred dollars to spend so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up photo editor and we are going to select a new file now when you open up your Photoshop for the first time it may have a default resolution what mine has right now is the last file that I opened up the size that I chose uh, that's what it has right here you may have something different um, it used to be like years ago that the default resolution was 72 pixels per inch this is very low pixels per inch and you will get a very poor printout of your text if you leave it there so the easiest thing to do if you are in the United States a typical piece of paper that you're gonna print out of a normal household printer is eight and a half inches and you're gonna want to do eight and a half inches in the width and then this is a little drop down menu and if it has pixels you're only gonna have eight and a half pixels and that's not what you want make sure you hit inches you can also do this in centimeters if you're more familiar with that um, form of measurement so I'm gonna do eight and a half inches by 11 inches this is gonna make my paper vertical and then I also want to make sure this is the most important part here if your resolution is below 300 it is going to look pretty bad when you print it out and this is for miniature text I'm going to show you an example of a 100 pixels per inch printing and I'll put that on the screen I'm going to show you a picture of 300 pixels per inch printing and then also I will show you what we're going for and that is going to be 600, type in 600, 600 pixels per inch. This is going to make a very big file size, but um, I'm okay with that. So most computers can hold that capacity now. Um, RGB color is fine for this. Um, and then um, background, you can have it transparent, um, but I just keep mine at white. It makes it simpler for me and then go ahead and hit OK and it will give you your piece of paper. So the first thing I want to do now that I have everything set up, I have the details set up, is I am going to make my individual sheets of paper and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use this line tool that's over here on the left so I'm going to click that. Down below it's giving me options so down here it says one pixel and that's fine um, you can keep it at one pixel we are actually going to turn these lines off later um, but I'm going to put it at three pixels because we have such a high pixel per inch ratio I'm going to put it at three pixels and I'm going to choose the color just black okay so now my line tool is ready to go what I'm going to do is divide this large real life size sheet of paper into smaller sheets of paper so that I know that when it prints it is the correct size for my project. I am going to divide it into three quarter inch sections by one inch sections and this is me kind of rounding um, the paper sizes so when I make paper in miniature to match an eight and a half by eleven real life sheet of paper I make it three quarter inch by an inch. 
So I'm going to divide my paper. I'm going to line this little um, cross hair thing up with the one. I'm going to hold down my left button. I'm going to hit shift and then I'm just going to drag it down. Hitting shift makes sure that it stays straight. If you try and do this by eye, it's going to be very difficult. And then before I release the shift button, I'm going to unclick my left click button on my mouse and there I have a straight line. Now if you come over here to the right, it shows you all these different options. We want to look at the layers. So I'm going to click on the layers button and here it tells me shape one. So shape one is the line that I just drew and then background is my white background in the back. So that's pretty obvious, but just so you know. All right, so now I'm going to make another shape. So I'm just gonna bring my tool back over here and I'm going to do it three quarter inches over and I can actually zoom in a little bit. Over here to the left is a little zoom tool and down here at the bottom you can control it this way. So you just zoom in a little bit and click and it will zoom in. This will help me see my rulers. If you do not have rulers on your screen, you can go to view and just make sure there's a little check mark next to the word rulers. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm gonna click back onto my line tool. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm going to go over three quarter inch just line that up to the best of my ability. I'm going to click again, hit the shift button and pull down and it'll automatically scroll for me. It's okay if it goes off the paper because when it prints, you won't see that. Okay, so I have two lines three quarter inches apart. I'm going to do another one three quarter inches apart. Click, hold down the shift button, pull down. And then I'm going to let go of my left click button on my mouse and there we go. Occasionally, depending on how zoomed in you are, you may think that your lines have disappeared, but they haven't. It's just like a little glitch in the program. If you would like to, you can zoom in a little bit and you'll see that your line is still there. It just sometimes disappears depending on if you have zoomed in or zoomed out a certain amount. Okay, so you can do this all the way across the paper. I'm not going to do that today, but I am going to start making our horizontal lines. So I'm going to click back on that same line tool. I'm going to get my crosshairs here. I'm going to start, you can see over here on this ruler, do you see that line going up and down? It's telling me where my crosshairs is at. So I'm going to line that up with the one mark on my ruler. I'm going to click hold shift and pull it across. Okay, I'm going to do my second line an inch apart. I'm going to line it up with the little two line, click, hold shift, pull that across. So what we've created here are two sheets of paper. So if you filled this whole page with the lines going across three quarter inch apart on the top and then an inch apart on the side, you could make several, several sheets of paper here with different things on it. I'm just going to make these two for this tutorial today. Okay, so now I'm going to click back onto my viewer and if you have the uh, zoom in button, you can kind of draw a line around what you want to look at and it will automatically zoom in to those two pieces of paper. These are our mini pieces of paper. And now I want to put text onto this paper. So I'm going to click over here. This is my text button. And then it gives me all my options down here. Now before I even start, I want to click down on this size and get the smallest choice. Because if I start really big, I'm not even going to be able to see it. And then down here, I'm going to click auto this is kind of your spacing in between your text. You want it to be auto so that it adjusts along with your text. Okay, so now I'm ready to start typing. I'm going to come up with a random letter. Dear Sam, thank you 
for the delicious, delicious, how do you spell delicious? Delicious, the yummy cookies. Okay. So now I have this text. I would like it to be black, so I'm gonna click the color down here. Um, I would also like for it to be spaced on the left, so I can click that. I also want to change my text. I want it to look more like a typewriter text. So I can go through here. Um, let's see if we can find. Let's see if we can find one. There we go. That one, Lucida console regular is the one I typically use to make it look like a typewriter text and it came with the program. So now that I have this, if you ever see this little check mark, it's just asking you if you want to commit to your changes. And if you like how it looks, you can just click that. Now we can make it even smaller. The lowest font choice that we had was a six. Uh, but we actually want it a little bit smaller. We want it to look normal on the page. So here is how it looks after we've shrunk it down even further. And you can just kind of space it out as you would like. So here is our text on the paper. Okay, I filled in the rest of this letter, so that guy should be ready to print. The other thing you can do with this process is to put in a handwritten page. Unfortunately, showing you that process was gonna make this video way too long, so if you're interested in that, leave a comment in the comments below so I'll know that you'll like to see that video in the future. So there's a couple options of things you can do now before you print it. One thing you can do is you can turn off these shape layers. So anything that says shape over here is one of the lines that you had put to divide where your paper goes. So you can click this little eyeball and this makes it disappear. And you can just click them all off and all you have left are these pages. Now you have to be rather good at um, cutting if you want to make sure that these are the correct size. If you want the lines to stay, but you don't want them to be completely black, you can turn them all back on. And then you can click on each one, and you're going to go up here to Opacity, and you're going to take it all the way down to, I would keep it probably at 20. Now if you click off of that, you can see this little gray line. And this can help you have your cutting lines so that you know that you have cut it straight and in the correct size. Um, if you have good eyesight, you can probably even go lower than that, go down to 10%. And it'll just print a little gray line on here. And um, you can just do that to each one. There is a way to combine these layers, but um, I don't want to get too complicated if you're a Photoshop newbie. So just go ahead and you can, you can even do this when you're creating the lines if you'd like to, just to make it a little less of a task. So I'm going to make these all go down. So now I should be ready to print these pages and I'm gonna walk you through that step as well. You're going to go up to File and you're going to go all the way down to print. As you can see, you can also just hit Control P. Wait for the printer to show up. Okay, so what you should see is you should see your image. You make sure you select your printer, whatever your printer is here. Um, plain paper, unless you're printing onto cardstock, you can change your printer settings here. So make sure you're paper size is letter because eight and a half by 11 is letter size. So that is the size that you would like. Your orientation is portrait. And 
So here it says actual size, eight and a half by 11. That's what you want. And we're not gonna do crop to fit. We want our um, piece to be the size that you want it to be. We're printing one copy, unless you're confident and you wanna print just dozens of these, go ahead. And so now we're going to hit print. So there you go. That is my super easy tutorial to get pages printed in miniature. Finally, if you want to save this, it's very simple like most programs, just hit save. You're going to ask you where you want to save it. A Photoshop file is a .psd if you want to continue to work in that file. If you would like to save it as a JPEG, you just go down and select JPEG and then hit save and you're all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to like, subscribe, and most importantly, create. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.